Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm calling this the Scottish vlog because there was a little bit of travel in it. A few parts of Scotland that we'd not been to before. So it starts off with a trip to Inverness and that's new for me because I'd never been before. And we took the route that apparently takes in some of the area where they actually filmed James Bond. Now I've only seen the Roger Moore James Bonds. It's a Daniel Craig one. I think it's Skyfall, but um, what you're seeing here is the route, not necessarily exactly where they filmed it, but I thought it would be interesting for you to see how beautiful this scenery looks. Now this was beginning of July and it wasn't the worst day. You can get very grey days. You can see that the sky had its moments, but it, um, it got very sunny. And then obviously you had this gorgeous atmospheric almost mist. And what I think happens in Scotland is that you don't really appreciate your scenery because it's there and it's just part of where you live. I suppose that goes for everyone. But even though I am in Scotland and I do actually see quite a lot of beautiful landscapes, I must admit that this was very stammed out. It was absolutely stunning. And then the whole reason for why we went to Inverness was um, my love of Duran Duran. And they obviously through the last couple of years haven't been able to play much, if anywhere. And I think they've been playing quite a lot of different locations. And one of them happened to be Inverness. It was about two and a half hours, maybe three hours drive. Um, the stadium was quite a small one, a football stadium, but one of your smaller football clubs. The concert was absolutely brilliant, as you would expect. They're always fantastic. Duran Duran never disappoint. The weather, however, was a little bit hit and miss. It didn't bucket down with rain, but it went from being quite dry to not so dry. It had its moments of being a little bit showery, but thankfully it wasn't absolutely chucking it as it can do in Scotland. But I feel as if we got away quite lightly with it. And they are always such a good group. They never fail to be entertaining. They make it look so easy. I started seeing them in the late 90s. I would have loved to have seen them in the 80s, but I don't think they would have allowed children in. And I don't know who would have thought to take me. So I have to accept that unless they build time machines, that's not going to happen. But can you see again, we've got the, from the previous vlog I'd mentioned about the people that love to just put a finger in the air. I can see that we've got a guy in front who's got the fingers in the air, so happy, living his best life. You probably can see in the video that there are certain bits where you can more or less see exactly what they're singing. It's so famous their entire catalogue that you can look at their mouth and you can say I know what that song is I can tell exactly it was um, just what was needed I think um, everyone's in the same boat it's been such a strange couple of years and I've never been really to any outdoor concerts not that I can think of specifically and it just so happens that this year there's been a little run of them so I had Let's Rock in the previous one then we've got Duran Duran, and in a few moments I'll show you the next one. But um, overall, as I say, they're, they're a group that always are a joy to watch. I'd love to know if there's any groups that you always make sure if they are playing near you, you go and see them. Because it's definitely, for me anyway, knowing that a group that you absolutely love that's playing nearby it's almost like you have to go. It's not, will I go? It's like, oh, I have to go. I can't miss this. And so we move on to the next outdoor concert. So probably about two weeks later, so end of July, Floors Castle. So further down this time in Scotland. And I tried to show you how stunning the location was. Again, completely new to me. I believe that a lot of these places are actually opening up their venues now so that they can have concerts and they can do little outdoor events. And it was Tears for Fears supported by Alison Moye. Alison and Tears for Fears both both excellent. They never change, they're just superb. Alison 
is such, she just comes across as such an easygoing person. She makes the singing look so easy. And it was, again, a real positive, fun experience. You were told that you could bring your own chairs. So we bought some outdoor chairs. I suppose they're fishing chairs, essentially. And not everyone did, but I was glad that we did because you're there for quite a while, from about half seven to maybe half ten. So Alison played a big selection of the hits. Again, her voice does not change. Really easy going, speaking with the audience. Her, I can't remember who the person is that was singing with her, but he's, I want to say Sean. He is fantastic too. Their voices just work together so beautifully. And I think she said because of COVID, they were 50% down. So it couldn't have been easy for them, but you wouldn't have known. And then we move on to the part of Tears for Fears where Roland is actually speaking to us and I'll let you hear it because everything that he says is really amusing. It's very Scotland based and about the new album. So have a little listen to what he said. Stop comparing. There's this pissing contest, who's the most Scottish. <laughs> That's fair enough. It is a beautiful country and one that I've only in recent years got to travel through, partly because of COVID, going up to the highlands and stuff. Just to make sure I didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah, no, it is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Gorgeous place. And uh, you're very, very lucky. And we're very honoured to be here to play for you tonight. Yes, uh, we, we're Tears for Fears and we have... We have a new album, which is called The Tipping Point. In fact, that's mostly the reason why we're here. We're on this kind of thing called a world tour. We've been across America, 22 sh shows in about five weeks. Came across to Britain, played some fantastic places. This is, this is one of them, without question. The new album, I can see a few of you singing along to it. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. For those who don't know it, we hope that by the end of this evening, you'll go away and you'll order the vinyl or a CD or even a cassette. <laughs> yeah. We'll just stream it. And then we won't make any money. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, yeah, so this is Kurt, my uh, fantastic partner in crime. We've been making music together for five decades and um, 2004, 2005, we released an album called Everybody Loves a Happy Ending. And uh, I think this is probably our favourite track from it. This is called Secret World. They were both very amusing, really, again, natural with the audience. Um, this is when it was starting to get a little bit darker. The sun was beginning to set sky was just unbelievable. It was one of those special nights when everything is just stunning. Do you ever have those nights where you just think this is a real moment, this is a photograph in your memory moment? That's exactly what it was. And again, they sang all the hits. You could see people getting excited when their favourite songs came on. Um, they also had some food stalls and um, it, it was almost like a little miniature festival vibe and um, unfortunately again just because I'm on the gluten and dairy free it's not easy so quite a lot of the time you go to the stalls and 99 if not 100% of the stuff doesn't apply to your diet but that's cool you can always take a little uh, dairy free bar in your pocket something like that and um, I was able to get a an oat milk cappuccino so I was very happy with that but again because it's a festival you're paying festival prices but as long as you don't mind, it's all good. And just sitting outside, watching what felt like a private concert in my little chair, what a moment and what a memory. Loved it. And I would say this was probably about nine o'clock at night. In the summer in Scotland, it is it can be light up until half ten, quarter to eleven. That's really normal. So I thought it would be good for you to see how light it can be quite late on when we're in Scotland, when we're in high summer. And then just to finish, the beautiful road home. Again, this will be half ten, 
A little bit later, sun setting, radio's on. Beautiful. You really do sometimes, as I said at the beginning, forget how beautiful your scenery is, how stunning where you live is. Never actually been to Floors Castle, but I live in Scotland, so even though it's a tiny little dot on the map, it's fantastic to actually think what we've got here and to just appreciate it. And I hope you found this quite relaxing, quite interesting too. Just a little insight into some midsummer Scottish shows. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon.